Let's see how we can add MongoDB in our Nuxt3 application. If you want to integrate any database inside your Nuxt3 server, then this is the video for you. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. The first thing we are going to do, we are going to create a Nuxt3 application from scratch and then we'll show you how you can integrate the database. So as usual, I'm going to open my terminal and then I'm going to go to my project folder. And inside that, I will initiate the Nuxi command, which is npx Nuxi init and then your application name. In my case, I'm going to call it Nux3 mongoose. So basically what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you how you can integrate mongoose, but in that way you can integrate any other database available out there. For example, if you want to use Postgres or MySQL or MySQLi, you can do that all by the same way. Okay, as you can see, our application is installed. Now what we are going to do, we are going to cd into our application directory. And now let's open it in our code editor. As you can see, we have a Nuxt project. Now let's run it. I'll open terminal inside VS code and then I'll run yarn dev. Okay, first I have to install the dependency. Approximately 10 hours later. Now that we have our dependency installed, now let's run yarn dev. So as you can see, we have the application running. Let's open our favorite browser, Firefox, and let's open localhost 3000. So as you can see, our next app is running successfully. So what we are going to do, we're going to mock our API. Let's create the server directory. For those of you who don't know about server directory, it has been introduced with Nuxt3. So what you can do, you, you can create full-fledged API inside your Nuxt application itself. So basically what it what will happen, your server directory will contain all your APIs file and the, and the normal root directory will contain your Nuxt application. Previously on Nuxt2, it was server middleware, but now it's called server as you can do uh, a full-fledged API inside that directory and it is powered by uh, H3 framework which is also newly introduced with Nuxt3 itself so it has a lot of things to uh, offer we will see all of that maybe in the next uh, video or maybe uh, in another video because that thing need its own video so what are we going to do now we are going to create just a mock API to see if it is working properly so what I'll do inside the server directory, I'll create another folder and I'll name it users. Inside, no, we have to create uh, another uh, directory name API. Inside that, I'll create another folder called users. And then inside users, what I'll do, I'll add index.get dot ps so what is happening here let me explain so the thing is uh, next automatically route on the server uh, for you so basically inside uh, server and api whatever the directory you will create it would act as a route so for example now if i uh, try to access api slash users and if i send a get request i will uh, that request will be handled by this file so how do we handle uh, uh, incoming request so let's see so we have to export default define event handler we have to define an event handler inside that we will get a event right we'll get a h3 event and now we can return anything let me just show you hello world so I'm just returning an object here, but you can see later that it has been returned as a JSON uh, file. So let me just open it up from the browser. So I'll go localhost 3000 slash API slash user users. So you can see we have our response back. 
so basically that's how you know you can create a multiple event handler you can uh, accept get event you can accept a uh, post event you can accept patch and all other http request but the thing is how will you add a database integration in it so that's what we are going to see in this video so basically what we need we need a, a nitro plugin and now what is nitro nitro is basically what uh, powering the next server so let's uh, open the documentation and see what nitro plugin really is so i will go and i will open nuxt.com now inside that i will go inside a plugin let me see if i can find it if i don't then what i'll do i'll just search it inside nuxt documentation we'll search for nitro plugin so inside nitro plugin you can see uh, we have something like this so let's open the nitro plugin option okay so we can add nitro plugin so it will be executed on runtime with every request so that's what we want we want the the mongodb to be connected while the app is running right so what we'll do now we'll close this one we'll open our code editor and inside the server directory what we'll do we'll create another file named index.ts inside the index file we are going to write a synchronous function that will be executed with every request so let's do that export default and there we have our async function inside that we'll get our nitro app which will be of type uh, nitro let me just import the type now let's just console.log something and see if it is getting executed so to add it in our next application what we have to do we have to go to our next config then inside nitro we have to give it a plugins and then inside the array what you can do we can give server index.ts so let's save it and you can see we can access it so it is getting executed uh, whenever we are just saving whenever we are just starting the application so that's what we want we want our database to be connected at the time of um, accessing the web application so now we can uh, put any logic here be it a mongodb connection be it a mysql connection be it a postgres connection what we can do we can create the connection right here so that's what we're going to do let's install mongos and uh, initiate the connection right here so i'm going to uh, close the next and then what i'm going to do i'm going to install uh, the mongoose uh, dependency so yarn add mongoose so it will add the mongoose dependency and we'll be connecting to the mongodb database through this package so as you can see our mongoose uh, dependency has been installed now what we can do we can run the application again so now what what are we going to do we're going to uh, connect to the mongodb right here so i'm going to remove this one and then i'm going to write slow let's first import the mongoose so mongoose we have imported now let's try to connect so basically uh, this would be our connection string so the best practice is to keep your uh, connection string on all the server keys inside the environment file so that's what exactly what we are going to do now let's create a new file name env let's create another uh, environment variable mongodb uri and what we are going to do we are going to paste this one right here okay so now uh, how can we access this one we can create a runtime config inside next so let's just do that so i'm going to go to next config inside that i'm going to 
give some spaces and then I'm going to write runtime config inside runtime config I'm going to do I'm going to write mongodb URI so mongodb URI would be process dot env dot mongodb underscore URI so how uh, can we access it we can access it by uh, like this const config equal to use runtime config so this composable will give us the config inside that config we can access the mongodb uri so once that is done what i'm going to do you can see there are some error obviously so what we will do now we will check uh, what it is so basically it's a promise so what we have to do we have to await for it and i would also like to um, handle the error properly so what i'll do i'll add it inside uh, the try catch block and then i'll add a catch so that if i get any error what i want to do i want to log that error out okay so let's uh, check that also to check if uh, the mongoose is running what we are going to do we are going to console log, log connected to mongodb so let's check as you can see uh, we are uh, it is saying we are connected to uh, mongodb now there is a deprecation warning i don't know what it is i think it is uh, related to some uh, new features that you, that is going to be introduced in mongoose 7 so i don't have to be worried about it now what we are uh, interested in is the the message that says connected to mongodb so we are connected to mongodb now what we can do we can access our model uh, we can create the models we can then add data in it we can uh, uh, fetch the data from the collection so all we can do so to test it out let's uh, just create a dummy model inside our event handler so what are we going to do now uh, here so it's not a good practice to write all the uh, models all the uh, uh, collection inside one file just create different files I'll show you that uh, in the next video where we will build a project from scratch using uh, mongoose and uh, next so basically uh, just we're just testing it out so keep in mind don't uh, uh, curse on me so let's just uh, import a schema basically what we are going to do schema and let's create a document so I'm going to call it uso schema so inside that let's give it a just uh, email that is going to be type string and then I'm going to also give uh, a name and that is going to be uh, a type string so let's uh, do one more thing let's just export before let's uh, import model so as you can see we have a type error so what we'll do now uh, any type okay and it should be something like uh, user like that so what we can do now we can access the user user dot find and now we'll get uh, all the user from our collection so let's store it inside one variable okay so let's save it and let's try to access it from the browser so as you can see we have zero users so what i'm going to do i'm going to open the mongodb compass and i'm going to manually insert uh, some data so that we can see it in our api response so let's open mongodb compass for those of you who don't know about mongodb compass it's just like your php my admin but for mongodb you can uh, it has a gui so what you can do you can um, visually add data you can delete data basically you can perform curd operation in uh, any kind of uh, mongodb uh, database connection so that's what i'm going to do now so let's open the compass and inside that i'm going to paste my uh, database string so let's do that let's click on connect inside that i have a nitro inside nitro i have users as you can see it's all created 
uh, using our next uh, three backend. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, data. So basically uh, there are multiple way to do that. You can uh, import data using Excel file and all. But what I'm interested in, I'm just going to click on insert document. So inside that you already will get uh, ID that is default just like your primary key in uh, your relational database. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give email that would be jahid at null.net then another I'll be uh, give the name the name would be Chahid okay so once when I'm done with that I'm going to click on insert it will insert the data now if I go here uh, in MongoDB in a Firefox browser and if I refresh you can see I'm getting the data so basically that's what I wanted to show you let's just try with another uh, records so I'm going to click on insert document then I'm going to give email as John Doe at gmail.com the name as John so let's click on insert I, we have now two records now if I go to my browser and if I refresh you can see we are able to access the data from our uh, mongodb database from our next application so what i wanted to uh, show you is basically how you can create nitro plugin and inside that how you can uh, connect to the database that's just one way to do that but there are multiple ways that we will be discussing in the upcoming videos so i hope you will also be able to uh, integrate your database inside the nux server if this video helped you in any way then don't forget to subscribe the channel and give me a thumbs up and if you have any question or any suggestion regarding this video you have the comment section and if you want to get involved uh, into our uh, next community then there is a discord channel uh, you can find the link in the description i'll meet you in the next video till then stay blessed stay happy bye